Well, here we are once again with Vasti Knives. This old sword is with you, and this is the second model gator, as in alligator. This baby is also a four inch blade, or just shy thereof. We're going to get into some of the details in a moment, but let's take a look at that blade. Yes. Stonewashed Warncliffe. So the company themselves is calling this their Warncliffe Gator, while the previous model that came out a few months ago is referred to as the Sheep's Foot Gator. I don't know too many alligators that... Uh, <laughs> have a sheep's foot, but uh, you never know. Maybe they ate a sheep. Here is a massive knife once again. We're going to do lots of compares today because of the size of this knife. It is made in 14C28N, a good solid stainless steel. They come in at $69. Less discounts from White Mountain, should you be buying them there. Um, this one came directly from Vosteed as did the other alligator. So um, don't know if they're available yet at some of the secondary places. I believe that the first one is. But uh, I've got to back out a little more, get this whole thing in the frame. What we have is a grenade grip. And um, I at first thought it was micarta, but I saw some other reviewers refer to it as uh, G10. So perhaps it's G10, but we've got these interesting little fibers going on here that make it look like it could be micarta. But knowing that micarta is generally a more expensive material than G10, I'm going to say it's G10. It is a grenade frag style grip that does not bite you too much. I think it's just right. For giving you a good grip without biting the hand. It is a switchable, shiny steel, stainless steel clip. Quite sure it's stainless steel. Yep. And it uh, is reversible to the left side. There's the plate. They uh, wisely uh, inset the clip as well as use flat headed screws, which is a thing of beauty and allows us to slide this giant knife in and out of the pocket. Now, it also came with, and I'll see if I can show them to you before we're done, raised thumb studs that replace these. Now, this is either just considered to be a blank or is uh, was considered to be a simply a lower level thumb stud. Now, there's three ways to open the knife. There is a very muted but nicely jimped back flipper. There is the well-accessed front flipper, even though I'm not a real front flipper kind of a guy, but I have no problem with that. And we've got the thumb stud, and it picks up nicely. I mean, I have no problems opening it with that lower level one. Um, let's see if I can find the package with the now here they are just so you can see yep those higher thumb studs can replace the uh, lower thumb studs so what's interesting is that it looks like there's no provision on the higher thumb stud for a torx but there is on the lower ones probably because you got nothing to grab I think you're going to turn in those uh, bigger thumb studs uh, by hand or maybe um, some leather covered uh, pliers, what have you. At any rate, you can also, should you choose, simply put your finger on the blade. Beautiful. And you can spidey flick it out. So you really got four ways. You've got that, you've got the thumb stud the back flipper and the front flipper, and nothing protrudes so much that it gets in the way. We've got a beautiful uh, slot there for those of you who are lanyard lovers. Not me. 
Um, occasionally on a smaller knife, I'll use a lanyard, but not on this guy. And look at the thickness of the liners. Very, very robust. You might even measure those up, but I'm getting about a 50% contact of that liner on the blade and it isn't even all in there. So we've still got a little bit of liner left over on the outside. Very comfortable handle. Um, very nice file-like jimping here on the thumb ramp. And if you wanted to, you could even creep forward and put your thumb in there as well. Very interesting Warncliffe style blade. I think this could almost be called a sheep's foot as well, but they are calling it a warning. We've got this faceted uh, swedge near the front, this big swoop in here, and a very straight and fine edge that is extremely sharp. And I'll see if I can do some paper cutting tests before we're done. But first, how about some measurements so we can understand the full idea of how big this knife is. Uh, we're gonna call it just shy of nine and a quarter inches overall. And um, I believe it's like a 3.95 blade yeah, with a cutting edge of um, like three and seven eighths, somewhere around there. Moving to the thicknesses. Nice thin handle for a knife this size. I mean, 0.59 seems like a lot, but in proportion to the rest of the knife, it is really not bad. Got a blade thickness of 0.13, which in millimeters is 3.4. Finally, we got a weight, and it is weight relief. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Let's look at it now. Here's your weight relieving. Like uh, five big holes on one side, or four big ones and one smaller one, and then a row of smaller ones on the liner locking side. There we go. And that's wrong. I think it's grams. Yep. There we go. Uh, six and a half ounces. So still not very light, but it is big and it feels solid in the hand. So 6.55, we'll call that. And I think that's very similar, if not exactly the same as the uh, sheep's foot. The one they're calling sheep's foot, the first one. Speaking of that, let's open this guy up and get that first model gator out. There it is. That is a beauty. I think my preference leans slightly towards this one. Um, now, I could have gotten a blue one. Something in me said I don't want a matching set. So I'm going to go with the green, see what the green looks like. But I suppose I could have gone with the blue and uh, had some sort of uh, collectible pair to talk about. Well, here's what's interesting. Wow. And this is very interesting. We have about a half inch longer blade, at least, on the sheep's foot model than on the Warncliffe model. Very, very interesting. I thought they were going to be the same. I hadn't done a compare. Yep, still slightly longer. We go blade to blade. That is interesting. So just for reference, we said we had like nine and a quarter overall, about nine and an eighth on that one. And we've got, yeah, like, um, yeah, like another quarter of an inch maybe overall. And the blade right at, four inches, slightly, slightly, slightly less. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe none of this matters to you, but for sake of a review and we're comparing, I figure, hey, why not? Well, here is 
the previously largest, I believe, Labrador from Vastid. And uh, you can see that at least in height, it is a good deal smaller than the gator uh, Warncliffe. And what's the steel on this? 154. So you got a little better bump in the steel on the Labrador. Very nice knife. If you want a real smooth and high quality boulder, deep carry and all, the Labrador is the way to go. And I've got a review out on that. What if we bust out the Goliath II in the Bowie blade from Max Ace? That's an inch longer. In fact, she's even going to be bigger than this model gator. What do you think about that, alligator? <laughs> Two big knives for sure, but the Goliath edges it out. It is a big, heavy, solid knife that is drop shot. And yes, this is a very smooth operator. She will drop shut very nicely, just like that. As far as the detent goes, it's ever so slightly early. I guess you call that early, right about there. But once you pass that, it just drops. So for you fidget guys out there, if you unlock that, very easy to drop it. Falls right down. Just depress that liner a little longer, go a little further. If you're fussy about it, you may find some pause there, but you're not going to find any pause on an alligator, so forget it. Yeah, I know, bad joke. <laughs> what if we put it up next to some standard fare here? Griptilian by Benchmade. And Rat One by Ontario. And um, yeah, even the Rat One, not as long, definitely not as tall. This is a large and I would say useful big blade from Vostid. Excellent, excellent job. And uh, I did say we we're going to do some cutting because that is a very high and uh, fine grind edge on this guy. Hold on a moment. Do a little garbage diving here. I threw out some bad prints the other day. Let's make some use of them, shall we? Oh, yeah. Wow. So smooth. That is a nice factory edge. One other thing you might find of interest is that the Vosteeds come in these nice metal boxes. You get lots of accoutrements in there. There's your alligator sticker. It was in both versions of the uh, Gator. Got a nice Vostid patch, a uh, microfiber cloth, and a bunch of literature. And of course, there are the raised thumb studs. But um, I think they are going to, for these knives, get larger boxes because <laughs> it was trying to come out. Look at that dent there. And these came through that way. They're trying to bust through the box. And these are the boxes used for their other more conventionally sized knives. So I think they're going to have to spend the money on a bigger box. And who knows, maybe that'll get passed on to the consumer. There you go. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. This old sword, back with you soon.